They found the Higgs boson particle. Yay! Hooray! Hooray! Yay! So, what does that mean? What is the Higgs boson particle? Well, I'm Science Jim, and I'm going to see if I can't explain it to you. Now, to really get the idea of the Higgs boson particle, we kind of got to go up in space. Because it doesn't really work here on Earth, at least not to think about it. Now, the Higgs boson particles are everywhere. This is everywhere. So it's not like it's only in space. But to really think about it, we got to take our imagination up into space. So imagine that I've got this nice green screen behind me and it's got nice stars. And I'll pretend that I'm floating. There, okay. And after the special effects. So let's pretend we're in space. Now, in space, if I had a balloon and a bowling ball in space. So here's my balloon. Floating, right? Okay. My balloon is sitting here. I can flick my balloon. Right? The balloon would fly away from me. With just a minor flick of the old finger, the balloon would fly away. But my bowling ball, okay? Flick. Okay, it would go away, but you can kind of feel how the, bo the bowling ball is harder for me to move than it is for me to get the balloon to move. Or think about it this way. If they're both coming at me, which is harder to stop? No worries, right? All right. So what's going on with that? Now the reason we have to go into space is because if we think about this on Earth, we get all befuddled with weight. Well, the bowling ball is heavier than the balloon, blah, blah, blah. And that's true, but that's not really what's going on. In space, all of a sudden, this is where mass is important. Mass is really how hard it is to get something to move, or how hard it is to get something to stop moving. The famous equation is force is equal to mass times acceleration. All right? The bigger it is, the more force you need to get it to change what it's doing. The smaller it is, the easier it is to get it to change what it's doing. So scientists were like, why? What is it that makes this thing harder to move than this thing? <laughs> It's not weight. It's not gravity. It's something else. And way back when, a fellow by the name of Higgs, no coincidence, and, he fell, and several other fellows came up with this idea of the Higgs field. And with the Higgs field, they came up with the particle called the Higgs boson particle. And basically the way this works is this. The more mass something has, if you will, the thicker the stuff is around it. We all sit in this Higgs field. At least that's what was presented to be true. So these Higgs things are everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Save me. They're everywhere. But the more massive something is, and in a way the types of particles that make up whatever it is, the more massive, you can kind of say heavy if you the more likely those particles are to really kind of dig it, okay? So something that's heavy, all these particles are kind of attached around it, really not attached, but they got to flow around it. And so if I want to move this bowling ball through the Higgs field, well, there's all kinds of Higgs particles all around it. If I want to move the balloon through the Higgs fields, eh, there aren't as many around it. Think about it this way. This guy is floating in water. Relatively easy for me to move this guy around in the water. This guy is floating in maple syrup. Very hard for me to get this guy to move through the maple syrup. Well, the maple syrup is the Higgs field for this guy, because it's got a lot of mass. The water is the Higgs field for this guy, because it doesn't have much mass. 
So to think about the Higgs field, think about all of us sitting in this huge pile of universe with this field everywhere. And it's this field that is kind of around us and it's what we're always moving through. And the more massive we are versus depends on how easy or hard it is to move through the field. To have a field, you also need these particles to make up the field. That's what the Higgs boson particle is. It's the particles that make up this field. And this was presented to be true way back when in the 1950s. Okay, not that way back when. And they have been searching for it ever since with Fermilabs and the Large Hadron Collider. And finally, they're pretty sure, as of the 4th of July, 2012, that they've really got a good look at what is probably the Higgs boson particle. It's a big day in science, and I hope I was able to kind of make it a little bit clearer as to what in the world we're talking about and what in the world the scientific world is partying about. <laughs> science Gym coming at you from Science Gym Labs. Never stop wondering, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Jim Miller.